Good morning and welcome to Junior howdy, Church. Howdy, Thank howdy. you for in joining us today. Yep. I'm glad you're here. Yep. Because Someone, nobody else is. They left us. It's just me and Brother Matt today. And it's the middle of the summer. They're not uh, even I know. in school. It's not even like it's school time yet. No, they Ooh. had, uh, some of them are away, vacations mm. and different things. So it's just me and Brother Matt. That's all right. The OG. Yep. That's it. That's right it. Right here. I'm glad uh, that we are together, and mm -hmm. we get to be here for Bible school. Brother Matt, I, or Bible school. Mm. It's online junior church, Brother I know, Tony. I know, I know. I'm Bible still stuck school. in Bible school mode. It's over. Yeah, yeah. But Zoomerang's done. You brought the candy. I got the candy. You got it all? Oh, yeah. All 100 pieces of candy. That's not 100 pieces. Yeah, it's definitely 100. I counted it twice. No, it's not. Yep. I have been doing this for 16 years. Look, I Giving want out candy on Sunday mornings, Bible schools. That, yeah. at best, 98, 99 pieces of candy. No, I think there's one missing. Look. At least. Look. That's easily 100 pieces of candy. I doubt it. I doubt it. My, my trained junior church worker, youth pastor mind tells me that at very best, 99 pieces. All right, you know what, Brother Tony? I'm going to count every one of these pieces. And prove to you that there is not a missing piece of candy. You there can count it. 100. Right now. I'm going to do it right now. Right do now. it. I'll right now. This up right now. Let's We're not going to start candy. junior church right now. We're going to count this candy right, right now. now. Real good. All right. You ready, Brother Tony? Here we go. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Five. What's a hundred grand? He's gonna take off his shoes here in a second. Yeah. Seven, eight, four hours later. Ninety-seven, ninety-eight. Looks like there's only one left. Uh oh. Ninety-nine. Told you. Ninety-nine. Yep. Only one left. Ninety-nine. I told Tony. you there was not a hundred pieces of candy in what, the box. What happened to the what happened to the last piece? I don't know. It's lost. It's lost. It's hey, gone. You know, it kind of reminds me oh. of our lesson for today. Uh, you know, we're gonna talk about the shepherd that lost one of his sheep and what he did to find it. I gotta find it. You gotta find it? All right, well, Brother Matt is gonna go find his piece of candy. It's not that big a deal. I'm sure we can find a piece somewhere. It's important. But while he's doing that, I think we should go ahead and get started with Junior Church. Right now. You think I dropped in the parking lot? I don't know. We'll see. Is that under the camera? Check the dark, scary hallway. It's probably not in there. I probably don't even need to check, but I don't know what if it is. Okay, there's a light switch in here somewhere. Okay. Oh, Tony? Is that you down there? Oh! Oh! oh Found oh, it yet? Oh, no, I didn't find it! I what are you doing now? I'm trying to find the candy, Brother it's, Tony. It's, you can't be playing in the grass all I'm day. I'm playing, I'm working. If it was in the grass, you would see it laying on the grass. Maybe it's under the grass. I need to get a spoon. All right. Hey, are you ready to sing? Mm -hmm. 
You seem distracted. Yeah. What? No, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. Did ready. you find your candy yet? No. No. no I think I'm that's still the problem. Anyway, looking. brother Jonathan's not here today, so I'm going to introduce music time. Hey, over here. Hey, yeah. I'm going to introduce music time. It is Junior Church Music Time with me and Brother Matt, and hey. we are going to sing Good News. Good news, you found the candy? That's not the good news. Good news, oh. Christ died for me. Hey, man, All right. good news too. It is yeah, great news. That. So let's, uh, let's, let's try it again and All see right, if we can we see it. Ready? <laughs> good news, good news, Christ died for me. Good news, good news, if I believe. Good news, good news, I'm saved eternally. And that's what? wonderful. Extra good news. Ready for the second verse? Yep. Here ready we go. For the second verse. Here, Here we go. go. Let's get him brain back in. Ready? Woo! Good news. Good news. Christ lives for me. Good news. Good news. He prays for me. His word tells that he'll come again for me. And that's wonderful. Extra good news. Candy wasn't under your foot. Uh, I didn't think it was. Hey, good singing. Good job. Right, young people, it is Bible time. I've got my Bible. Hopefully you have yours. And we are going to be in the book of Luke this morning as we continue uh, our stories of the Savior, uh, the stories, the parables that Jesus taught. Hopefully you remember what a parable is. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. Jesus used earthly things that people could see around them every day in order to tell stories that would help them to understand heavenly Things. And we're going to see uh, that here in Luke chapter number 15. Luke chapter number 15 is an awesome passage when it comes to uh, parables. And here's why. Because Luke chapter number 15 is one long parable with a couple of different parables in, in it. Uh, Jesus is teaching uh, there in Luke 15 and he talks about three things that were lost. A, a sheep, a coin, and a son. And he ties them all together and we're going to look at uh, some of those uh, today, or one of those today, rather, uh, that's the lost sheep, about the lost sheep. And so Jesus here, uh, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 15, verse number 1, uh, that they drew around some publicans and sinners to hear him. You know, uh, that's an important part of this passage because publicans uh, and sinners, they're, they're distinguished. Those were two groups of people uh, that really uh, the other people didn't want to be around. As a matter of fact, the next verse, verse number two, says that the uh, Pharisees and scribes, uh, the religious people murmured and they said, this man uh, receiveth sinners and eats with them. You, you see these Pharisees and these scribes, these real religious people, uh, they looked on these sinners, whether whatever their sin might have been, or these publicans, Publicans had a special place because uh, they were people who were seen as traitors. They worked for the Roman government. And they took money uh, from the Jewish people to give to the Roman government, and sometimes they took extra uh, for themselves. So they were just they were looked at, uh, just really looked down upon. And, and so these Pharisees and these scribes, these real religious types, they said, "Oh, look at Jesus! Jesus eats with sinners, and he brings them to himself." But you know, here's what the Bible says in Luke chapter. Uh, number 19, verse number 10, the Bible says this, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, Jesus had a mission here on earth, and that was to find the lost and make a way for them to be saved. And so Jesus, he hears this, uh, and, and so the Bible says this in verse number 3, Because these people were murmuring and because of the people who were sitting around him, the Bible says this, He spake a parable unto them, saying, and here's what he says, what man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven, over one sinner that repenteth, more than over the ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Jesus begins to tell the parable, and here's, here's what it was. Again, he uses earthly things. So what does he use here? Well, he uses sheep, and these people would have been real familiar with sheep. 
You, you see, uh, in, in Jesus' day, the sheep was used as a sacrifice, and so these people would have known uh, all about sheep, and, and they would have uh, held a really high place because uh, they, uh, they, they used them for the sacrifice, and they needed a, a, a lamb, a baby sheep, without spot and without blemish uh, to take to the uh, altar and take to the temple for their sacrifice every year. So they would have known about sheep and raising sheep and things like that. And so Jesus uses those earthly sheep to teach a heavenly lesson. So the Bible tells us here that the shepherd has a hundred sheep. Man, that's a, that's a lot of sheep. Uh, and when he gets back to his fold one day, uh, he begins to count them and he finds out there's only 99 there. He's counting up his sheep, and, and, and maybe he knows them. Man, he knows those sheep, and they know him, and he's counting them as they go into the, uh, to the fold that night, and he gets to them, and, and now it's 98, 99. And he's like, wait a minute. When we left today, because I counted them when they went out, and I counted them while they were in the field, we had 100 sheep. Now there's only 99. There's one missing. And, and we look at that, and we say, well, it's just one sheep. He's got 99 other sheep. He has 99% of the other sheep. You know, uh, if we were looking at it statistically speaking, that would be a great, a great thing. I mean, think about taking a test. Who would like to get a 99 on their math test or their history test? Or, or who would like to finish up with a 99% in a class they were taking? Man, that would be great uh, if you got 99% of all the questions right in your class for a year and you finished up with, I mean, we'd be like, man, that's A+. Plus. But you know what? Every sheep is important to the shepherd. Remember that. I want you to remember that about yourself. You see, because Jesus is, is using this earthly story to make a heavenly meaning. And, and here's, here's part of the meaning. We'll get to it all. But here's what I want you to know. In this, in this uh, lesson, uh, we're the sheep. You, you see, the Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah that all we, like sheep, have gone astray. In other places, Jesus talks about those who are in the kingdom of God, and he refers to them as sheep. We are his sheep, and he is the shepherd. And, and, and here's what he wants us to know. Every sheep is important to the shepherd. Jesus said in another place, I am the good shepherd. And you know what? You are important to him. He loves you so much. I, I said earlier, uh, Luke 19 said that, uh, that he came to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, Jesus left heaven as beautiful and as perfect as it was to come down to this earth. And he didn't come that people would minister to him or take care of him. He didn't come so people would worship him. Uh, angels did all that in heaven. He didn't come uh, so that he could make a great name for himself. No, God had done that uh, for all of eternity. He came all the way back in Genesis. Let's go back to Genesis. In Genesis chapter number 3, man sinned. And when man sinned, the Bible says because of one man's sin, sin passed upon all that all have sinned. The Bible tells us that every one of us has sinned. And because of that sin, we're separated from God. As a matter of fact, uh, if we die in our sin, unfortunately, the Bible tells us that we're going to go to a place called hell. But Jesus loved us so much. The shepherd loved the sheep so much that he was willing to leave a place of beauty and love and perfection and a holiness to come to this earth where sin reigned, where people were, were, were lost and sinful. He left heaven to come to this earth to seek and to save that which was lost. And we see that here with this shepherd. You see, the shepherd counted all those sheep, and when a lot of people would have said, well, I got 99% of the sheep, it's just one sheep. One sheep's not going to make that much difference. One sheep's not that much meat. One sheep's not that much wool. It's not a big deal. Just forget about it, and we'll go on, and we'll just, you know, we'll buy a new one to replace it. No, Jesus here teaches that this shepherd, and he even goes on, again, he's teaching these people. He says, which one of you, what man of you, in verse 9, he said, which one of you, wouldn't leave the 99. He's talking to the Pharisees and the scribes in particular. He says, which one of you wouldn't leave the 99 and go find that lost sheep? Because here's what he knew. He knew that they knew as good shepherds, you go find the sheep. Good shepherds don't leave the sheep defenseless wandering around uh, in the wilderness where it can be killed. And, and a good shepherd's going to go find the sheep. And he said, listen, you'd go and find it. You go and look for him, just like Jesus left heaven to go and look for us uh, and came to earth. Here, this shepherd goes back out 
leaves the 99, goes back out into the fields and the wilderness. And think about that, if you've ever been in a pasture. Uh, they didn't have little pastures with fences like we did. It was mainly just like an open hillside. Remember the story of Jesus' birth? They were there on the hillside when the angels appeared to him. So he would have to go out and search and search and search. But you know what? He searched until he found the sheep. That's what we see there uh, in verse number 5. The Bible says, and when he found it. You see, he didn't stop searching until he found it. And when he found it, the Bible says he put it on his shoulder and he rejoiced. When the shepherd found the sheep, he was so excited. Man, think about that. It was one sheep out of 99. Why, why, would, you get, you know, why would you get so excited? But the shepherd loved the sheep that much. But he rejoiced. Not only did he rejoice uh, over the sheep, but he went back home. And verse number 6 says that he called all of his friends and said, Hey, hey, you know that sheep I was asking you to look out for that was missing, that was gone? Remember I told you to keep an eye out for, for little Baba or Lamb Chop or whatever the name of the sheep was? He said, I found him. Come to my house. We're going to have a big party. We're going to rejoice that I found the sheep. This uh, parable goes on to, to say uh, or give us a, an illustration of what it's like in heaven when one of the sheep come back to Christ, when one of the sheep uh, is found no longer lost, it gets saved. When a person gets saved, the Bible says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth. You, you see, here's what Jesus said. This is part of his, his application here. He says, listen, you know what? Just like you would rejoice over that one sheep, Heaven rejoices over one sinner that gets saved. That's how special you are to God. Today, if you know Christ as your Savior, when you bowed your head and said, God, I know I've sinned, and I know sin is wrong, and, and I don't want to sin anymore, I'm asking you to be my Savior. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins, and, and God, I'm making a, 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 a t testament right now that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn from my sin. I'm going to serve you, Lord. I want you to be my Savior. I love you. I know you're the only way to heaven. When you did that, when you did that, the Bible says that there was rejoicing in heaven. He said there, he says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner. Heaven rejoiced when you got saved. Hey, if you're listening and you're not saved today, can I tell you something? Jesus left heaven for you. Hey, he knows you've gone astray. Again, Isaiah 56 says, we all like sheep have gone astray. The Bible tells us in Romans 3 that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I've sinned, you've sinned, Brother Matt's sinned, everybody has sinned. And can I tell you something? The Bible says, for God so loved the world, God knew that everybody had sinned. God knew that everybody had thought, said, or done something that displeased Him. That's what sin is. Anything we think, say, or do that displeases God, that's sin. And He knows we've all sinned. And even knowing we all sinned, the Bible says that He left heaven. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. You see, the idea of seeking there is that he was on a mission. He had a purpose. He wasn't just wandering around and stumbled on some lost people and said, eh, I guess I could die for him. No. When he left heaven, he was on a mission. He came to live a perfect life for sinful man because he loved us so much and he knew we had sinned. He knew that the wages of sin was death. He knew that, 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 the, uh, that the payment for our sin was death. And that the only way that that could be satisfied was for somebody to take that payment. And he did that for us on the cross. You, you see, Jesus went to the cross. He was nailed there. His blood was shed for my sin and for your sin. The Bible goes on to say the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You see, our, that great shepherd, the good shepherd, he, he left uh, the heaven and he came and, and he made a way for the sheep to come back uh, to, the, to the fold. He made a way for us to be saved. And when he did, he gave his life. And he died on a cross. Uh, he, was, he was beaten. His hands were nailed. They put a crown of thorns on his head. Why? Because one sheep, one little sheep was that important to him that he was willing to shed his precious blood. Another place that he was, he was uh, obedient to death, even the death of the cross. He loved us that much. But you know what? Not only did he die so he could forgive our sins, but he got back up. On the third day, he rose from the grave, uh, and he returned to heaven. The Bible says he ever liveth to make intercession for us. And now we can go in the name of Jesus and ask him to be our Savior. And the Bible says, just like this shepherd rejoiced 
when the sheep was found, in heaven they rejoice when one lost person comes uh, and, and is saved. He says more than over the 99 just persons. He said heaven is more excited that somebody would put their faith in Jesus Christ than 99 people would walk around acting like they're saved, acting like they're better than everybody else, acting like everything uh, that they do, like they never sin. You see, that's what these Pharisees and scribes did. They, they walked around and they made the people think, oh, they always, look at that person. He always keeps the law. And they, they put their nose up in the air like, yes, I'm better than you. But Jesus said, you know what? The works that we do, they don't make heaven excited. It's when we put our faith in Jesus Christ. You see, our faith in Jesus Christ is the only thing that will get us to heaven. The Bible says this, it's not by works of righteousness that we have done, but according to His mercy, He saves us. It's not, it's not the works that we do. It's not being nice to people and loving people and helping people and not saying bad words and not doing bad things that gets us to heaven. It's not uh, doing good deeds or going to church or being baptized. As our pastor likes to say, none of those things left heaven and died on the cross for you. But Jesus did. The shepherd did. The shepherd left heaven. He left, uh, he, he came to this earth, and, and instead of going to the 99 that were looking right and acting right and pretending like they were doing right and pretending like they didn't sin, no, he went and found the one that was lost, and he made a way for them to come home. And you know what? He does. This, that, that's true for us today, too. He made a way that we can go to heaven. If you're here and you trusted Christ as your Savior, I want you to remember, you're special to God. And, and you know what? Because He saved us, we need to be doing those things. We need to be loving others and living right and doing right and helping and, and, and being a Christ-like example. But if you're not saved, this morning I want you to know you're special to God. You, you're, that, you're that one sheep that was lost, and He wants you to be saved. And you can do that today. Just ask, say, God, I know I've sinned. No sin's wrong. And I know you left heaven to come. And I know Christ died on the cross so that I could have forgiveness. And I'm putting my faith in that. Please save me. The Bible says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Remember that, young people. God bless you. Congratulations to our winner! Yay. Good job! Thank Woo. you for sending in your answers and getting on the wheel. Yep. Would you like to be on the wheel? You right there on the couch. You sitting in the floor eating your cereal. Yep, you. Would you like to be on the wheel? That Frosted Flakes? Maybe you can be on the wheel if you know the answer to this week's Question, question of the Week with Brother Tony. That's him! That's me. That's right. You can send in your answer to 717. 739-6536, also known as the Junior, Junior Church, Church Text, text line. line. Send it in, uh, in the description, probably on the bottom of the screen. Yep. I don't know, I can't see it. He adds that in post-production. Uh, okay. But here's the question of the week. You ready? Oh boy, oh boy. Today we talked about the lost sheep. Yeah. One little sheep out uh -huh. of a hundred. And the shepherd went to find it. I'm glad he did that for me and you. But here's the question. What did the shepherd do? when he found the sheep. If you remember what he did, send a text message in to Brother Matt at 717-739-6536 and he will put your name on the wheel. It's true. If you don't, if you don't, here's what you can do. Mm -hmm. Be kind. Rewind. Oh, Rewind it back. Check it out. Listen to it again. Maybe you just missed it. You say, Brother Tony, I don't remember what he did. Did you say what he did? I said what he did. Mm -hmm. Go find it. So, Send it in. You could be there next week. It's true. Brother Matt, how'd your search go? Not good. Not good? It wasn't in the groundhog hole. It wasn't in the groundhog hole? It wasn't in the creepy cross space. Was it under the grass? wasn't under the grass. No. I even tried. I took a spoon out. Yeah. It wasn't in the fridge. Well, guess what? What? Well, remember good news? We sent good news earlier? Yeah. I was and you thought the good news was that I found your candy? Yeah, I got so excited. And I at was, that I was time, rejoicing it wasn't. You. But after... You were in there messing around the grass. Mm -hmm. I came I back. I was working. And I, was I was searching. 
I, you Diligent. were playing in the grass. Diligence. So, so, you know, I put the table back. Yeah, I see. Yeah, thanks for cleaning that and, up. And while I was putting the table back, yeah. guess what I found? Ready? <gasps> Did you find my contact lens? No. You uh, found pens. No, I didn't find pens. Hold on. Okay. I keep a lot of stuff in here. That's a deep pocket. That's like Mary Poppins. It is. Pocket. It is. But under the table, I found a box of chewy lemon heads. 100, 100 pieces of paper. We found it. It was where was it? It was right under the table the, the whole, whole time. time. You must have dropped it when you were counting. Brother Tony, I, I was climbing trees. Yeah, you were. You were looking. You looked hard. You searched diligently. Yeah. You did. I did. Because I, I wanted that one, that one last piece, of piece. It meant a lot to me. Yeah, you know? Yeah. It did. That's it a lot like today's lesson. Just like today's yeah. lesson. We were special enough to cry. Amen. He, he didn't just go outside and search in a groundhog hole where he could get his finger bitten off. Yeah. He left heaven for us, and that's awesome. All right, well, hey, we found the candy. That means we can sleep in oh, peace yeah. tonight. Hopefully, you can sleep in peace after watching Junior Church today. Hopefully, everybody will be back with us next week, and we'll see you next Sunday. About to eat that one oh, great. little now, piece of candy. Now we're back to 99. Back to 99, but I know where this one's going. <laughs> We'll right. see you next time. Wow, wow. mm. <laughs> Bye.